The action of the switch on pin RD7 can be simulated with a stimulus function. MPLAB SIM can respond to the action of external hardware, such as switches, with the stimulus functions. The stimulus dialog is accessed from the debugger pull-down. Scroll to stimulus and create a new workbook. The stimulus workbook has tabs for the various types of stimulus. There are six tabs, offering options to apply stimulus to the simulator. Regular repeating waveforms, lists of voltage levels, events from files, and sequences of data values can be injected into registers and applied to external pins. The asynchronous stimulus tab can be used to simulate the action of pressing a switch. Click on the pin SFR column to select the pin RD7. In the action column, set the action for the pin to pulse high when pressed. In the width column, a somewhat arbitrary value of 5 makes the pulse last 5 cycles, just ensuring the pulse lasts beyond a single instruction. Press the Fire button to apply the pulse to the RD7 pin. The output window logs the action. Press the Single Step key to go forward now, into the delay routine. The next step enters the delay routine. Delay routines such as this are often used to slow things down so that a display can be seen by the human eye, for instance. When simulating, which runs at a slower speed than the actual processor, these delays are often not needed. While using the simulator, we just need to know that the delay routine is called, but we don't want to step through thousands of iterations of a delay loop. Use the variable underscore underscore debug to change the way the delay loop operates while debugging using the simulator. To modify the delay routine to operate differently while debugging, but retain its function in the application, add a pound if def function to check the state of the variable underscore underscore debug. If the variable underscore underscore debug exists, then we'll skip the thousands of loops in the delay routine and just exit. Additionally, an fprintf function and print out a message to remind us that the delay routine operates differently while debugging with the simulator. In order to use the printf routine to echo that the delay routine executed, but in a different way when debugging, the stdio.h file must be included. A couple of other things need to be set up to use fprintf. Under the Project menu are the Build options. The MPLAB Link 30 tab needs to generate a heap to handle the character storage for fprintf. 256 bytes is ample for any message we need to print out. Messages from an embedded controller must come from a peripheral device on that controller. The UART needs to be configured to send I.O. to the output window. The Simulator Settings dialog is on the Debugger menu. Check the box to enable the UART I.O. And check this button to see its messages in the output window. Now, as you go through your code, you'll see the fprintf string in the output window each time the delay function is called. MPLAB Sim has tools to analyze how the code is running. The stopwatch can time the execution of code. While stopped at a breakpoint, select the stopwatch from the debugger menu, then press the zero button to clear its contents to get ready for a measurement. Run to the next breakpoint 
and the stopwatch accurately measures the instruction time in cycles and microseconds. Another way to optimize code is to use the trace analyzer. While setting breakpoints and single stepping through code is one way to see how your code is functioning, an alternative is to use the trace facilities of MPLAB SIM to record instructions as they execute while the simulator is running. Use the debugger menu to select the settings dialog and enable the trace all checkbox. Press run then halt or stop at a breakpoint, and view the trace window from the view menu. The upper half of the trace window shows the instruction flow. When you click on an instruction there, the corresponding section from the source code is shown in the lower half. Trace is useful to see how you got to a certain point in your code. That's a quick tour of the simulator. We hope this will give you a few pointers and you'll explore these and other simulator features. If you haven't already done it, now is the time to get started with MPLAB IDE. Go to our website at www.microchip.com MPLAB and download your free copy of MPLAB software. This is the end of our presentation. Thank you for your time.